Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. And today what I want to cover is how you can kind of copy the look of the Necrons that are going to be coming along in the new 9th edition starter box. Well, what are they calling it? Launch box? <laughs> Indominus, at any rate. I really like the sort of rusted effect they're going for with the slightly more rotten old Necrons waking up. And I thought, well, how can we do that with a minimum of paints and not a lot of messing around? And to be perfectly honest, it's really mostly shades, which, cha-ching, easy. So we'll get into this straight away. As always, I'm going to list all of the paints in the description below. So let's get started nice and quick. Now to start off with, because he was going to be predominantly silver, I've started with some gunmetal uh, from Army Painter as a primer. Problem is, I <laughs> chose the worst possible conditions, and it's gone a little bit flat. You'll see it's not very shiny. There's some of this little sparkly bit still visible, but it could be better. Luckily, I was planning on going over it with another color anyway, and for that I've got here Iron Hand Steel. And I've got just a little bit of water in my brush, and let's just go ahead. You'll see that very quickly brightens that up. And yeah, pretty much all over all of the metal work, which he's a Necron, so. <laughs> there we go. Now that looks a lot shinier. Also, we want a brighter base coat for this because we're going to darken it down quite a bit with the sort of rust effect we're going for. And for that, we're actually going to use Reichland Flesh Shade. If you were to use something like Agrax Earthshade, it's very brown and it will look. I would say dirty rather than aged. What we're going for is sort of a rusted old metal and the slightly red tint that Reichland Flesh Shade has to it will help us with that. So I, well, ordinarily I would use a, a medium shade brush or something, but mine, <laughs> I have abused it for many years and it is a little bit old now. So I'm just using a regiment brush here from the Army Painter. All we're going to do is go over the whole model. And let's just cover this boy in... Uh, see how it's starting to come together? Ugh. <laughs> let's cover him in Reichland Flesh Shade. After about 20 minutes to dry in the sun, that's what we've got. And, ah, now you see what I mean by that little bit of red tone. He doesn't look quite so busted and grubby as that Greg's Earthshade would make him look, but the slightly red tone of Reichland Flesh Shade, I think, makes a difference. I do want some areas to be a little darker and more pronounced though, so prime candidates here, we're going to add another can uh, another candidate, another layer of this, just in some select places that I really want to look grubby and worn. So in those little bits on his back there, let's just make sure I haven't missed anywhere on those little spinities. Um, bleh, there's not really a right answer to this one. I'm just going to go around and add a little more to some areas that I want to be slightly darker. To sort of deepen that color a little. Now with that second pass in some areas, you can see that color's built up a little bit more strongly and ooh, ooh the difference that makes. Doesn't that look the business? Now we are going to come back and do a little more to the armor. Well, I keep wanting to say armor. I suppose this is body <laughs> later on. But first we want to get on and paint the gun. So I've got here some contrast. This is Black Templar, and I fixed my shade brush, hurrah. What I'm gonna do is cover over pretty much all of it. Uh, the only things I specifically want to avoid are the blade here and this little bit of uh, metallic nonsense in there. The rest, we're just gonna give it a nice coat of contrast. We'll make that black. Because we've used a metallic undercoat, we'll get a nice, slightly sort of metallic highlight to it once this dries. Now if you like as well, what you can do is get a medium layer brush and go around and do like some of these exposed <laughs> bits of his uh, armor and what have you. Um, I do recommend, don't do what I just did, do use the uh, <laughs> the smaller brush. Uh, but let's, oh, shh, you saw nothing. Let's take the time now and fill in all the black stuff. And that's not quite dry yet, but I think you can see where that's going. <laughs> what we're going to do now, I've got this is just white scar. And we're going to go ahead and put this over all of the bits that are going to be green. Now you might think I've lost my marbles here. Uh, you could do this with a couple of coats of moot green if you wanted, but I prefer 
this look. Um, as well, at the same time, if you want to do the stripe in the middle of his head, you can give him a couple of passes of this. And don't forget this big old bad boy on his back here. Now, for the sheer simplicity, you're better off just base coating in the whole thing white and then spreading out a little when you get to the bottom. Because I'm going to do that central cable in black. The ones on the outside are going to be green. So it doesn't matter if I white in the one in the middle. Now that's going to need another coat in a minute. Uh, I wanted to let it dry properly first. But what I want to do now is switch on down to my small layer brush. Load that up with some white that's watered down a little more than usual. And we're just going to get in and run that see quite messily at first. Let's run that into all these little dealy boppers, the zappy bits. Uh, I don't know what this is called. <laughs> now I've gone over all of that white twice, uh, including all of this sort of stuff in the little dealy boppers in his gun there. Now you'll notice there's a little bit of splash over, like I haven't got it all perfectly inside the, uh, the recesses, but that's Perfect. <laughs> it's going to work perfectly well for what we've got in mind. What we'll do first though, we've got Warp Lightning. This is another contrast color. And we're going to use this two ways. First of all, straight from the pot, let's go ahead and apply this to... Whoa! <laughs> I love this. Oh jeez, I'm too excited for that. Anyway, try and keep your brush moving you know, in one direction as much as possible. And if you can't, you know, follow it back so that you're always sort of going in the same... I don't know how I'm trying to explain myself there, but don't go up and down, you know, along a, a long area like this. You want to follow the curve of the... Uh, oh, that's bright. You, you want to follow the curve of the uh, cable. Uh, same too when you get to this one on his back here. Uh, but let's go ahead. Oh, there's a slightly tricky angle to get to there, but... Go ahead and green in straight from the pot his cables. And then we're going to get some contrast medium. And what I'm going to do is get a dollop of that. First one, two, three, and four dollops of that on my palette. You just put them in the background there. Rinse my brush off. You always want to get your clear stuff first. So if you're using a medium, uh, I find you're less likely to contaminate it if you start by adding that to your palette first. But five bits of contrast medium to one bit of warp lightning. I'll mix that up on my palette there, and then we can start applying it to the model. So let's just get in there, and it doesn't matter too much which brush you're using here. All you want to do is go over pretty much all of that white stuff. If you splash over onto the black a little, don't worry, it's going to help sell that glow effect. Now once that's dried, how easy is that? <laughs> if you're worried about the green sort of running into the uh, the center of those little dots, what you can do is get some fresh white, throw your brushes around, and just dot in a little bit of white into the center of those again, just to make them really glow. And that's what I'll do. I think that does look a little bit better. And from here all we're doing is really a matter of cleanup. I've got here, this is Vallejo's Flat Black. Uh, I'm using this because it was right in front of me, and I like the coverage on this a little more than a bad and black. All I'm going to do is fill in here uh, the pipe in the center. So take the time, be quite careful with this. Uh, there's not really any other black details to worry about just yet. So let's fill that in, call that done. Then we'll go back to just a little iron hand steel and we'll tidy up that metal again. And same too if you've gone over any of these little radial bits. Uh, you could also paint these white and sort of do them in the same glowy effect as the, uh, the weapon, but that's up to you. Now you want to get yourself some Necron compound a small dry brush and a bit of old tissue. And we're going to prep up our brush to dry brush like we normally would. Really work this into the bristles. And then what you're trying to catch is along the edges of these details. So the shoulder pads are a really good place to start here. 
just back and forth a few times until you get that nice sharp edge. I might need to add a little bit more paint there actually. Um, I've seen in the in the photographs so far that the um, the higher sort of command rank guys for this particular dynasty tend to have shinier shoulder pads and heads. Uh, that's really up to you though. All I'm going to do is cruise around all of the model and just very lightly along the edges of any details use a bit of Necron compound to make him shine. Now you can do the same too along his gun. Let me just get a decent look at him there. I'll be very sparing with this. You really only want to catch the very edges of this material. So, And then when you've given him that dry brush, a quick spray of some Unitor and Varnish will protect your work and tie it all in together. That's not looking too bad, especially considering there was very little actual painting involved. What I'm going to do now is slap a quick base on him. I'm going to use Astro Granite, dry brush it with Underhive Ash, then give it an all over Agrax Earthshade. And there we have it. With his base dry, our immortal is complete. And man, that was simple. <laughs> I really enjoyed doing that and getting the opportunity to sort of get ahead of the curve with 9th edition coming. If you're looking for a way that you can paint the contents of the box, you know, at least similarly enough to, I think, how they look, you're onto a winner there. And with a minimum of paints too, which I always think is a bonus. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all the patrons who helped make this possible, including producers Jonathan Harris and Alan Nuttall. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, and uh, I really like how that turned out. You guys, enjoy the rest of your day.